to this Eclipse tutorial series. My name is Michael Traeger, and I created these videos while finishing my master's degree at Duke University. This tutorial series was funded by the Medical Physics Graduate Program at Duke University. These tutorials will be focused on providing an introduction for students in the Duke Medical Physics Graduate Program with respect to a project they will complete during their radiation therapy class, but can be extended as a useful tool for any beginner Eclipse users. As a disclaimer, these videos are not meant for use as guides for clinical applications, including treatment planning on real patients, rather as a good starting point to familiarize new Eclipse users. I'm not affiliated with varying medical systems or with the ARIA software at this time, and am by no means an expert user. In this video series, I will cover the basics of the Eclipse interface, getting started with the treatment plan, contouring strategies, basic 3D planning, IMRT planning, and how to analyze plans. I'll be working with Eclipse version 13.6 and ARIA version 13.6. Alright, let's get started. This is the sixth video of the Eclipse tutorial series, Analysis. In this video, I will discuss some techniques for analyzing treatment plans, including DVH analysis, hotspots, the plan evaluation functionality, common dosimetric terms, and how to print a report. First, let's discuss DVH analysis with the IMRT plan we created in the last video. DVHs can be useful for checking if critical organ constraints are met, we have acceptable coverage of the PTV, and for calculating various dosimetric statistics. We should be careful, however, because a DVH is only a 2D representation of dose volume information. DVHs give us no information about the spatial distribution of dose and structures, which can be very important. It is important to also look through isodose lines when analyzing a plan. We can access DVHs through the external beam planning functionality, as I discussed in an earlier video. To pull up the DVH, we can right-click on the 3D representation and select Show Dose Volume Histogram View. We can now maximize the screen by double-clicking on the top bar. We now have a blank DVH. To add structures, we go to the Dose Statistics tab, which is currently open, and then we can select boxes on the left side. So let's select the PTV, the bladder, and the rectum. Some DVH options can be seen at the far right side of the toolbar, up here. So we can view all the DVH options, we can show dose levels, which correspond to the isodose levels that we currently have selected. We can choose a white background or a black background. We could also select between a cumulative graph and a differential graph. So in a cumulative DVH, the column heights of each bin represent the volume of the structure receiving greater than or equal to that dose. This ends up looking like a smooth curve and always starts at a maximum to the left and decreases as the dose value increases to the right. This is the more common view of a DVH. In a differential DVH, the column height indicates the volume of a structure receiving a dose given by the corresponding bin, and only that bin. This type of DVH looks like a typical histogram. We can also show crosshair by clicking this button. This is useful for finding exact values from the DVH. So we can click on any point of the curves and see a more precise value as well as use the left and right arrows to navigate through the curves. We can also right click on the DVH to select any of the previously mentioned options. We can also switch between absolute and relative dose and absolute and relative volume. So let's leave it on relative volume and absolute dose for now. Also, as I've mentioned in a previous video, we can come down here and click one of these drop-down bars. We can then select Add Expression to use logical expressions to create new structures. For example, we can do PTV, subtract the bladder, and select OK. This will give us dosimetry for the part of the PTV that is not overlapping with the bladder. So we can now see that down here, and it will be in dotted line on the PTV, or on the DVH, I'm sorry, but it currently overlaps with the PTV. One other useful thing we can do in the DVH screen is to create a DVH plan comparison. We can simply drag another plan from the left side on top of the DVH, and this will create a comparison. Once we do so, all of the structures from both plans will be loaded into the Dose Statistics tab at the bottom of the screen and differentiated by different shapes of curves. So as you can see, we have boxes for our four-field box plan. 
and we have triangles for our IMRT plan. Let's now discuss hotspots and one useful trick for dealing with them. A hotspot is an area receiving more than 100% of the prescription dose. We typically want to limit hotspots to less than 20% of the target volume because they can lead to complications. Hotspots can cause serious damage if they are in serial organs since they are very sensitive to small areas of high dose. One useful trick to help get rid of hotspots is called fluence painting. This can only be done on an IMRT plan since we have modulation of our beam. Fluence painting allows us to slightly modify the fluence at certain locations without drastically changing the dose distribution. To access fluence painting, we can right click on the fluence for a field and select edit fluence. So we've now pulled up a fluence map for the current beam. The simplest way to use this tool is to focus on the first two options. The first one allows you to click on any point of your fluence map and set the transmission factor. The second tool lets you to overwrite the transmission factor elsewhere with the previously selected value. Note that this is not always possible and is restricted by the physical parameters of the treatment machine. Since our plan is very simple, there are no hotspots and therefore fluence painting will not help us, but I'll just show you what it looks like when you change the fluence. So with the previously selected fluence, we'll click and drag to paint the fluence of other voxels. So this is changing the transmission factor everywhere I'm dragging the pen. So since we don't want to save this, we'll just select cancel. Next, let's discuss the plan evaluation functionality. So this can be accessed through the workspace bar. We'll have to save our changes before we can go there. So plan evaluation is very useful for comparing two plans because it lets us compare them side by side. The plan I was just working on automatically gets placed on the left hand side and now we can drag another plan to the right. So let's compare our IMRT plan with the 3D plan we previously created. We can choose to scroll through the slices independently, or we can press this lock button. This allows us to lock each plan into the same slice. So this is very useful because now we'll be on the same viewing slice for each of the plans. And we can also zoom into one plan, and we'll zoom into the other plan automatically. To look at the structures, fields, or other information of a plan, you can simply click on one of its viewing windows and all of that plan's information are loaded onto the left side of the screen as well as on the bottom. Another useful thing we can do here is to pull up a DVH. To do so, we can select Evaluation from the top and click Show Dose Volume Histogram View. Our Dose Statistics tab at the bottom has the structures for both of the plans, so we can choose which structures to turn on or off. These are differentiable in two different shapes just as before, so this lets us directly compare the DVHs from both plans while also looking through the isodose lines. Some common terms that we may hear in evaluating plans are seen on this slide. Conformity index, in its simplest form, is defined by the volume of the target receiving the prescription dose divided by the volume of the target. This metric gives us information about how well the target is covered. A value of 1 corresponds to perfect coverage. If this value is greater than 1, the prescription dose is covering a larger volume than the target and is likely leaking out into healthy tissue. If this value is less than 1, we are not covering the full target. We must be careful with this basic definition because it does not give us information on how well the dose overlaps with the target. It just simply compares volumes. It is used more as a quick check to understand the target coverage. We can add more complex representations that include 3D mathematical unions, which can help us understand the actual coverage. Gradient index in its simplest form is defined by the volume of the target receiving 50% of the prescription dose divided by the volume of the target receiving 100% of the prescription dose. This helps us understand the dose gradient. We would like this number to approach as close to 1 as possible because that indicates a steeper dose gradient. Another simple statistic we often consider is D99. This is simply the dose that covers 99% of the volume of a structure. Similarly, we can consider V100, 
which is the volume that received the prescription dose. We can of course change the numbers associated with these two simple dose statistics to understand more about the coverage in our plan. These values are easily obtainable using the DVHs as we previously saw. A very useful tool for pulling these dosimetric indices out of a plan is to use Eclipse scripting. Eclipse scripting allows us to automate various calculations and tasks by accessing all information about a plan. Here's a simple script that I've created which automates the conformity and gradient indices given a structure, volume, and prescription dose. So as you can see here, our conformity index is 0.95, gradient index is 1.053. Lastly, I will show you how to print a plan report. To do so, go to File, Print, Report. So here, we can choose what layout we want. We could print a full Eclipse report that has information about everything in the plan, or we could choose to print just a field report, DVH report, short summary, or other options. We can also print to a PDF creator. This allows us to save a report in a PDF format, and then we could print it later on. Thank you for joining me for this video in the Eclipse tutorial series. I hope you now understand some strategies for analyzing treatment plans. This is the final video of this Eclipse tutorial series. Thank you for joining me, and I hope these videos were useful.